Video Lecture 9E, Formal Charges. Sometimes it's possible to draw more than one valid Lewis structure for a molecule. The structures on the right are two valid Lewis structures for the azide ion, N3-, which is commonly used to inflate airbags since it decomposes to form nitrogen gas. Each structure is valid for N3- minus, since it gives each nitrogen atom a full octet. By determining what Lewis structure is best, we're, we're trying to figure out which Lewis structure would best match what we know experimentally, experimentally about the bond lengths in the molecule. Formal charges is one way, are one way to help us determine which Lewis structure is preferred or which Lewis structure matches experimental data. What is formal charge? Formal charge is a fictitious charge that we assign to each atom in a molecule based on the assumption that all electrons in the molecule are equally shared. This is the exact opposite of oxidation number, which assumes that each atom breaks up into ions. We use formal charge as a bookkeeping device, just like we did for oxidation numbers. Formal charge is very useful in describing where the electron density will be in a molecule even if we assume that at electrons are shared equally. We can use this formula to very easily calculate the formal charge. We first need the number of valence electron each at the atom has. From this, we will subtract the number of lines drawn to the atom, which represents the number of electron pairs shared between that atom and other atoms and add to this the number of electrons in lone pairs. Just like with oxidation numbers, the sum of all formal charges in a molecule should equal the charge on that molecule. Therefore, formal, the formal charges for a molecule with no charge should all sum up to zero while the formal charges in a polyatomic ion should add up to the charge on the ion. How can we use formal charges to determine which Lewis structure is the preferred Lewis structure? The best Lewis structure for a molecule has a minimal number of formal charges. This means we want to have many atoms with a formal charge of zero. There are some cases where all the formal charges in a molecule will not be zero. This often happens in polyatomic ions. Typically, a polyatomic ion has one or more atoms with a formal charge. It is preferred that single units of formal charges are on several atoms instead of there being a large formal charge on one single atom. This means that if, a fo if formal charges are necessary, we would rather have plus one or minus one formal charges. Any negative formal charge should be on a more electronegative atom. More electronegative atoms are better able to accommodate negative charges. On the other hand, positive formal charges should be on less electronegative atoms. Therefore, it is a goal in this class to always use these rules for writing Lewis structures. Not only do we want to draw a Lewis structure that at least gives each atom an octet, we also want to make sure that that Lewis structure has a minimal number of formal charges. In the next part of this video, we will use our systematic method to draw a Lewis structure for sulfuric acid.
but we'll sign this structure formal charges to see if it has a minimal number of formal charges. Then we will minimize those formal charges. We will use the Lewis structure for sulfuric acid, H2SO4, to demonstrate how to minimize formal charges for Lewis structure. Our systematic method in this case is a very good way to begin drawing a Lewis structure. It gives us something to work from. So let's use our systematic method to draw a Lewis structure for sulfuric acid. First, we count up the number of valence electrons. We have two hydrogen atoms, each with one valence electron. We have one sulfur atom, which has six valence electrons. And we have four oxygen atoms, each with six valence electrons. That brings us to a total of 32 valence electrons. For step two, we want to sum up the total number of electrons each atom would have if it were isoelectronic with a noble gas. Hydrogen would have, for each hydrogen we would have two valence electrons since it wants to be isoelectronic with helium. For sulfur and oxygen, they would like to be isoelectronic with, with any noble gas with eight valence electrons. This brings us to a total of 44 electrons. If we subtract 32 from 44, this gives us 12 shared electrons or 6 bonds. Now it's time to arrange our atoms. We know that hydrogen atoms are always terminal. They'll be on the outside edges of our molecule. We've seen from some previous examples in class that oxoacids, such as sulfuric acid, also have the hydrogen atoms attached to oxygens. We're therefore left with sulfur and oxygen. Sulfur is less electronegative than oxygen, so we will place it in the center of our molecule. We'll then surround it by oxygens. And then draw our hydrogen atoms next to two of our oxygens. We can now draw in our six bonds, which puts a single bond between each pair of atoms. Sulfur we see that already has, has an octet of electrons around it, so we'll add the remaining electron pairs around the oxygen atoms to ensure that they each have an octet. This means that six electrons need to be added to the, op to the ax axial oxygens, and two need to be added to the horizontal, or two pairs of electrons, or four electrons, need to be added to the horizontal oxygens. We now have a Lewis structure that uses up all 32 valence electrons and has each oxygen, or I'm sorry, each atom with a, with a full octet of electrons. Now let's calculate the formal charges. When doing this, it's always very useful to label similar types of atoms or atoms with similar bonding types. We see that our two horizontal oxygens are both bonded to two other atoms. We'll label this oxygen type A. Our axial oxygens are each bonded once 
to one atom at a time. We'll label these oxygen type B. They will end up having the same formal charge. Now let's calculate our formal charges, beginning with the hydrogen. If we follow our formula, hydrogen has one valence electron, one line is connecting it to one other atom, and it has no unshared electrons in lone pairs. So our hydrogens all have a formal charge of zero. By convention, we do not write formal charges of zero in our Lewis structures. However, I will do it here too so that we can properly label. For sulfur, we have six valence electrons. Sulfur is connected to four other atoms with four lines. And sulfur has no lone pairs. Therefore, sulfur has a formal charge of plus two. Oxygen type A six valence electrons for oxygen, one line connecting oxygen with one other atom, or I'm sorry, two, we're on oxygen A here, so two lines connecting oxygen to two other atoms. Oxy oxygen type A has four electrons in lone pairs around, around it. This gives us a formal charge of zero. Oxygen type B also has six valence electrons, one line connecting it to another atom, and six unshared electrons. Therefore, oxygen type B has a formal charge of minus one. We see that although our Lewis structure gives each atom an octet, we have a great number of formal charges. We can reduce the formal charges in the following manner. We can take, we're not allowed to remove any electrons or add any electrons, however we can change non-bonding electrons, which are present in lone pairs, to bonding electrons. Remember that sulfur, being a row three element, can have an expanded octet, so it is possible for it to, be, to have more bonds. What we will do is take an, a lone pair of electrons from each axial oxygen, and make it into a bonding pair, giving us two axial double bonded oxygens. So let's draw a new Lewis structure that represents this. Our new Lewis structure now has two axial double bonds to oxygen. The two oxygens in the axial position now only have two lone pairs. The rest of the atoms did not change. We'll label our unique atoms once again as A and B. Notice that oxygen B is the only oxygen that changed bonding, as well as the sulfur. 
So let's calculate new formal charges for the atoms that changed bonding. Those are our oxygen beads and our sulfur. So for sulfur, sulfur has six valence electrons. It now has six lines drawn to it. And it still has no lone pairs. This gives it a formal charge of zero. Oxygen B has six valence electrons, two bonds drawn to it, and four lone pairs, also giving it a formal charge of zero. So all formal charges in our new molecule have, has a zero formal charge. This is ideal, a minimum loop formal charge Lewis structure. This also matches with the experimental structure of sulfuric acid. From spectroscopy experiments, we know that the axial sulfur oxygen bonds are shorter in length than the horizontal oxygen sulfur bonds, indicating double bond character for the axial sulfur oxygen bonds. In general, you should always draw a Lewis structure that minimizes the formal charge or has as many atoms with a zero formal charge as possible.